Hello and good morning. Welcome to gagros.net. I'm your host, Wally Sarkeesian. Today we have a very talented woman. Her name is Rose Gregorian. Ten years ago, she came to the United States, built her life from ground up. And now she is a candidate for Los Angeles City Council District 6. So we are broadcasting this live on Facebook and YouTube. Rosa Krikorian, we warmly welcome you. Thank you and good morning, Wally. Thank you again, again, so much for having me. And also I see my <laughs> logo on one of your screens. Uh, thank you for being so professional because um, a lot of uh, anchors and reporters, when they're talking to me, they're asking me for some information or logo or material to send to them, but you have it ready. So professional. I'm so happy to be with you this morning. So do we. We are very happy, really. Uh, uh, like, uh, uh, So let's dig into it. So you were born in Armenia, correct? Yes, I was. Which town, city? I'm from Artashat. It's not uh, the capital, Yerevan. A lot of people know Yerevan, especially non-Armenians. But I'm from Ararat region in the city of Artashat. Good job. So you, in Armenia, people have, because uh, they're born there, their parents born there, they have uh, not only mother, father, and brother and sister, but they have uh, a Kerkenik, Hanami, all that stuff. So you left all that and you, you pack your bag, you said, I'm going to the United States, correct? Actually, that was, yes, it's correct. That was a very interesting incident, how I came to the USA. I won green card, permanent residence card to live here. Um, actually, I was a lecturer at Yerevan State University, and I have a student who asked me once to fill in the form, fill in the application, online application for his family. Um, to uh, have the opportunity to win the green card, which I did, and then a lot of more people asked me to do that. So I fill in application for, I would say, at least 100 people. And somebody just told me, okay, you fill in one application for yourself as well. Um, I go, um, really? But then I changed my mind and yes, okay, let me do one for me. And that was back in 2011. Um, and I didn't check my status for two years. And here we go. The same student is, comes to my house to have a coffee because we were close with families. And I'm checking his family's application. And um, as I said, the hundreds that I filled up didn't win <laughs> the green lottery. And he goes, um, Ms. Gregorian, please check your application as well. Um, I was like, I don't feel like, cause you know, hundreds of people have not won. Why should I? He insisted. I would say, like honestly, I don't exaggerate the opportunity. Um, then I was really quick. I was going to go to London to uh, Queen's University for just um, a professional training. <laughs> I took the package of documents from the British Embassy that just opened in Yerevan and took the package to the U.S. Embassy. And that's how I came here and started my journey in the USA. Wow, that's amazing. So when you came to USA, you saying like uh, you didn't have no friends, no family, nobody. So who helped you in our the do Armenian community helped you? Or? Um, actually, I knew a girl who I helped with um, her documentation to come here. I translated stuff for her. I found her. I called her. I asked her to meet me. And then a couple of days I stayed with me and then I moved uh, away, living with another girl. So that's how it came. Uh, nobody helped me, actually. I do remember me 10 years, I would say 10 and a half years ago, like knocking at the doors, especially in downtown area and asking for a job. Uh, it was the fourth day that I was in the USA. As I said, I didn't have anybody, but through MAP, I was able to go to Pasadena to ask for a job. 
and <laughs> I was refused for at least hundred times. Wow! But <laughs> yeah, insistently looking for the job, I was able to find one at a local in downtown area at the bridal store, uh, and my job was just carrying the bridal gowns from the first uh, floor to the second to the fitting rooms. That's how I started here. Wow, that's very interesting, you know. So you were you were saying you worked for uh, some Armenian media. Uh, were were you a journalist worked there, or you just uh, uh, like helping them? Um, yep. Um, after the bridal store, um, I worked at a big retailer at Costco, and then I got a call from a woman. Um, who uh, read my posts that were very uh, literal and professional in Armenian. Uh, that was from US Armenia TV. They were looking for a journalist. That's how she found me and she wrote me and my uh, TV journey started. I worked a couple of months at US Armenia as a journalist, as a reporter. Then I moved to the ART in Shant where I stayed for seven years and that's wow. where a major impact on the community happened. So what were you doing there? I was a reporter journalist. Oh, my, okay. Um, yeah, my job was uh, reporting on the um, daily activities that were going on in the community. And it, uh, this doesn't refer just to Armenian community. I reported on everything that happened here politically, socially, um, I would say also uh, we touched art or artistic events in a sense, but majorly my um, focus was on political and social issues. And then at ARTN, working two years, three years, I would say later, I was not only a reporter, but also a news anchor who was reading the stuff. I was um, creating, I would say I was curating the content i was getting in touch with the people basically i was the one who did a job for three four people because uh, the content was m mine and i was writing i was reading i was editing i was my own editor yeah and also uh at art and shams i had the opportunity to interview um elected officials at all levels at city level at state level at federal level which gave me a profound understanding of the community from both sides, uh, from elected official side and from the community side. And at the attention, I had a very uh, good opportunity to work for, to work with, I would say, Los Angeles County Mental Health Department. This was a very long collaboration that uh, gave me opportunity to create programs for Armenian community to let them know what mental health is, what kind of services are available and why they are so necessary uh, to get. Were you doing it in Armenian or both English and Armenian? Both English and Armenian, the stuff we were getting in English because uh, very often we had um, specialists who didn't speak Armenian, even though they were Armenian, and we had to uh, kind of accommodate between the languages. So the, with the interviews, let's say I was interviewing Congressman Adam Schiff or Bob Menendez, of course they are not Armenian, they don't know Armenian, so the interview, especially with the police officers, firefighters, was in English. And at the same time, right on the spot, I was translating in Armenia for our Armenian community. Wow, that's amazing. Amazing accomplishment. And so what got into you to run? But you said after that, you started your own business, something? Yes. At the same time, when I was working at ARTN, um, I started my own company, uh, Shark Digital, because uh, for many years I have been um, dreaming for opening my own business because I have a very, I would say, streamlined uh, business thinking. I'm a business person in real. And during the last three, four years, I worked completely free for television networks. And that was a uh, help for my community, especially during the coronavirus hard times. 
um, I saw that um, there is a lack of being informed. There is a lack of information. A lot of assistance programs were coming in the community that were not advertised properly so that community members can learn how they can get the assistance that was much needed. I tried to fill the gap myself by teaching people on local laws, on local assistance programs, helping businesses to survive, because a lot of people didn't even know what is SBA, Small Business Administration. A lot of people didn't know what is EDD, Employment Development Department, how they can help people, how they can find um, the help that is provided through federal government and through the state, because a lot of people, you know, lost their jobs during the coronavirus and they had literally nothing to live on and the EDD was the main body that provided enough funding for people to live on until they were open to wait for the businesses to open their doors again and to get the salaries to uh, maintain their families wow well accomplishment in 10 years this is amazing you know <laughs> thank you yeah, it's really. So uh, what make you to jump into politics, running for city council? That's politics, right? Right, right, right. Thank you for the question. So my profound um, experience in journalism, uh, knowing the community and also my uh, business relations, because I do marketing and at the same time I work with um, big and uh, small investors gave me the, I would say, base of the skills that made me confident that I can do a lot of things for the community at large on higher levels. Um, that was the purpose. And the community where I live in, the 6th District, it's so underheard in the city hall. I'm driving down the like San Fernando Road in Van Nuys. I'm driving a lot of uh, places there in the sixth district, and I see literally broken streets. Like a couple of days ago, I was about to break my car. They were so like badly damaged holes in the streets. And I thought, okay, for years I have been working free. A couple of hours from my life I dedicated to the community. Why don't take the chance and do something really good profoundly for the community? Because I feel like somebody who will be representing the district would not take this as a position, as a just like job to do. They have to put their heart, their spirit, their experience, their brains to bring the real change because a lot of things have to be done in my district. So what area cover your district? Any like cities, name or stuff? Yes, it's quite big. It covers part of North Hollywood, part of Van Nuys, Sound Valley, North Hills, Pacoima, Arlita, Lake Balboa and the whole Panorama City. So um, it's a very big area where, as I said, a lot of things have to be done, starting from homelessness, ending with job opportunities, and why not um, cultural investments. So who is your competitor? Um, so the range is diverse. Um, as diverse Los Angeles itself is, and I love the diversity of the city. Um, so we are seven candidates, each of them have their agenda, um, their unique agenda, and uh, the only Armenian is me, but I don't consider now myself to be just Armenian, I'm, I'm Armenian American who has her um, certain plans, so what differs me um, from other candidates is that um, I have my specific steps to fulfill. Um, even though they were born here, I mean, the majority of them, not all of them, were born in the district. But um, I got my portion <laughs> from the community with, I would say, with the sweat. I earned it because 
I was without family, without the support system that everybody else had here. Um, I was the one who started from the ground and got so much from the community. And this is, I feel, the very right time to give it back. Wow. So that's that's what you're trying to do, you know, uh, give it, uh, giving it back to the community. And so how, how does this um, position become available? Is that somebody resign or... Or this is normal routine election? Um, so this was uh, Nuri Martinez's seat. She has resigned after um, the racist tapes that oh. shook the district and unfortunately eroded the trust. The trust was already eroded. The trust was already like gone between the community and the elected officials. But this was... Um, I would say heartbreaking um, incident in the life of the community that uh, really broke the bones of that trust. Why I'm so confident, why I'm choosing like, I would say very harsh words because um, I myself, I'm doing canvassing, I'm knocking hundreds of doors daily, I'm talking to the people and a lot of them, I would say the majority of them doesn't believe that somebody sitting there in the city hall will be able to change anything in the community's life because they don't want even to participate in the elections. They are confident that uh, the person who will be there will do nothing for the community or the very tiny things that will not bring the change. I'm, a pol I'm not a political insider. I have never been part of the community. Uh, first thing that they're asking me, are you Democrat or Republican? Um, <laughs> I tell them I am pro-community member who is trying to do many things regardless of being Republican, regardless of Democratic views. We need somebody who will be out from that system from the way of thinking that were that was rooted in the community before and will bring the new things, the fresh ideas, the will and the heart to bring the change, as I said. But in politics, there are always some leaning, you know, left leaning, right leaning, stuff like that. So you're trying to to, to be in the middle, sort of. Not in the middle. I would I would not say in the middle because I have my setup uh, things. But you know, um, taking steps that will favor the community regardless of anything is very 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 important. A lot of people. Uh, I mean, in a sense, it's a political machine, and there are people who are moving the wheels. Uh, they are people right now among the candidates who, in a sense, will represent the machine and will continue. They already set up uh, manners, unfortunately. Yeah. As I said, if people do the right, um, right choice, if they give their voice to somebody who is not continuing what has al already been rooted, in the community who will give their choice to the person who is really willing to work for the community. That is only when they can bring the change. So my motto is together, let's bring the change, but I will be able to bring the change with the help of the voters, with the help of the people, with their vote. Mm. Incredible. Um... So where where do you live? Like I, I I don't know. You don't have to say it, but uh, like which area? Like in city or? It is so interesting. I live right on the edge of the district, so um, the street that is looking me um, ahead is already the second district. I'm right on the edge of the sixth district that is part of the North Hollywood on Sadiqoy Street. What is the population in that district six district? You know, what how many people live there? Do you know? Or? 
Yes. Uh, so after the rezoning, um, they counted that approximately 260,000 people should be uh, living in the area, but among those, only 116,000 people are registered voters so they, that they can vote. Uh, so I can uh, also present the demographics of the registered voters because we have uh, you know all the information uh just to make our campaign going a 32 percent of the voting population are spanish-speaking or latino and the vast majority 41 percent are non-latino non-african american um and non-asian group among them armenians we have approximately nine thousand armenians living in the district but um, right now, we are also actively engaging people in the voting process by registering them because a lot of Armenians who moved there and a lot of non-Armenians who moved there um, are registered to vote, but they are not registered on the same address from the sixth district. So we are actively engaging people to get their ballots, which is so necessary. Uh, that is their right and their responsibility as uh, citizens to take part and to give their voice. So if you got elected, you would be sitting in uh, Los Angeles uh, City Council, like where uh, Kirk, uh, where Paul Krikorian is, or is that different area you have to be? Well, yes. Um, the main meetings are held uh, at the City Hall. Yes, I'll be sitting <laughs> around Paul Krikorian and all the, the number of the seats. There are 15 right now. Um, and there are also field offices where you can be, where you have to be, from where you have to operate as well, just um, to be in touch with the community, to meet them, to listen to their local uh, concerns, issues, questions, answer the questions. So there are a couple of field offices as well. But the main meetings, yes, the main meetings that will refer to the city that will be held in the city hall. At the end of the day, being a city council member, you don't have jurisdiction just on the sixth district. Uh, you are responsible for the Los Angeles city as a whole, which is huge, with um, 58 neighborhoods all in all in the city. Um, but uh, you are responsible for allocating funds within your district. So basically, you are um, making... Um, major and basic decisions for the city by voting which is doing the city council 15 members of the city council and you're getting the funds for your district and you are responsible for your uh, own district within the boundaries like uh, building um i don't know uh living spaces or changing living spaces getting business permits um parking uh, infrastructure uh, or um, giving, um, uh, I don't know, ordinances, local ordinances, those are under the jurisdiction of the council member. So, so what is the the different, like, you have Paul Krikorian, he's the president of the council, and then you have a mayor. How these positions are worked out? So, yes, we have the mayor and we have the city council just like we have a president and we have house of representatives of the senate so um uh, because los angeles is so big um it's divided into um uh, districts as i said there are 15 districts within the la city uh each of them has their representative um, who um, will be responsible for inner issues to represent the people better. And we have the mayor. So uh, council uh, is the legislative body um, of the city. And the mayor is the executive body of the city. So basically, um, members of the council make decisions um, to um, set up ordinances, to um, give them the right to be executed. And the mayor is the person who uh, verifies uh, the decision of the council and mayor also has the right to veto, of course, the decisions of the council, but the main legislative body who um, proposes ordinances and also um, gives okay to the ordinances to let it go is the council. 
Uh, so 15 members. And the Paul Krikorian is the council member for the second district, which is a neighboring district of the district I'm running for right now. And at the same time, he's the president of the uh, city council. So basically, there are 15 city council members and the president. And there is a mayor who um, verifies the decisions of the district. I'm so impressed with your knowledge how in short period you know all this stuff. I bet there are people living in this country for for ages. They they don't know as much as you do. So I'm very impressed and I wish you could make it through this because you really have all qualification. It's beside whether you're Armenian or wherever you are. You're just a very qualified person. And so I I don't want to make this one too long because um, shorter people watch shorter things than long one. So uh, we have like, you know, a couple of minutes left. So go ahead and whatever you want to say, message to your uh, 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 in District 6 or other places to help you. Well, thank you for the opportunity, Wally. Um, I'm very impressed to know you and to be your guest today. Um, I just want to say to the people living in the district, um, everybody is waiting for um, major changes within the community, but everybody has to understand that every each of us have their portion of investment in the community to make our neighborhoods and at the end of the day, the city and the country more wonderful place to call home for all of us. So each of us can do a very tiny things. It doesn't matter. I myself being an immigrant woman, I myself being all alone in this country and sometimes walking through financial difficulties. I was able to dedicate a couple of hours from my day to serve my community voluntarily. Every, each of us, especially the youth, we have to educate them. We have to teach them to take the path of participation because like all the answers and all the issues, all the problems, solution is the engagement and transparency and accountability and only through engagement we can get that transparency and the accountability that the community members are looking for rebuilding and rerouting i would say the trust that is much needed a person that will be going there should not take this as a position, should not go there for their paycheck or a title or to uh, represent special groups' interests. They have to put their heart in there to bring the change. I would just encourage people to uh, get to know my political platform, which is rose4la.com. That is on my website. And they are more than welcome to give me a call to ask questions. Uh, my campaign phone number is 747-314-5690. And my campaign office is right there on Van Nuys, um, close to the Jones supermarket. Wow, great job. I We just put there, you could see like your phone number and where they could send you email information. And, uh, and also you were involved in uh, uh, lots of public uh, stuff doing. So we, we put everything in there. And, uh, you know, I, I honestly wish you all the best. I hope you make it because you have really, truly all the qualification. And uh, so people who wants to get contact you, there is the phone number there, 747-314-5690. And also your email, and uh, they can't find anyone better than you, you know. So uh, that would be great. And uh, so please take care. I wish you all the best. And and to our viewer people, hey, if you happen to be in that area, and uh, go see her, find out about her. And uh, so that's how we find wanted to find out. She's a very intelligent woman. And, uh, you know, in short time, she built her uh, reputation and uh, hopefully uh, she could make it. We'll have uh, Armenian and then maybe from there she could push to Congress. Who knows 
where where the sky is the limit. All right. So thank you again for coming. Thanks for your time. And I wish you all the best. Thank you, Wally. That was a pleasure.